channel. Today, we are talking about the Santa Cruz. Now, normally what we do is we spend about a half an hour live here in this video bay with an actual car. So if you're tuning into us for the very, very first time, literally every single day, we spend a half an hour live at two o'clock on a weekday, and we go through in depth a Kia or a Hyundai vehicle. We also have a whole bunch of other videos that we produce every single day. So that's what we do here. Uh, but right now, we're going to talk about the Santa Cruz because just yesterday it was introduced, and we're going to go through that. So real quickly, i got to do a couple of little housekeeping things. Normally what we do is we're at the three-minute mark is where we start to um, allow uh, or where we start to get on with the content. I just need to refresh my page here so I can see what's going on. We're going to allow the live comments to come through here. Uh, if you want to join us, go to our YouTube page, refresh the home page at exactly 2 o'clock on a weekday, and you will see a live video tab. Click into that, and you'll be able to watch. All right, I'm just clicking into that right now, and I get to watch an ad for a second that I'm going to skip, and then we will get going in a second here. All right, a few comments on. That's helpful. All right, so bear with me here. It looks like I'm still in the shot, so <laughs> I realize this is not the best way to film. I'm going to be looking at my computer screen. I'm going to be looking at my notes uh, here as well. I've got a number of uh, notes here, so um, and it is delayed on my screen versus what I'm seeing here, so uh, these are always a little different to film. Uh, some people find these helpful. I am not here to entertain you. Uh, this is informative. I will do my best to inform you with everything I know. I'll tell you what we don't know. And what I like is that when you guys ask questions in the live stream or in the comments below, those are questions that I can take with me as we find out more about this vehicle and as it shows up. Because we will have it here in this big room, uh, which you can't even see how big this room is. We will have it here in this room uh, this summer and we will go through it. And uh, real quickly, I'm a huge fan of this vehicle. So my wife does not like the look. I have some convincing to do there, but um, this is a vehicle I can totally see for myself. And I'll tell you about why in a second. So I don't know if we are three minutes in yet. In fact, I'm going to sneak around and just make sure that that is doing what I need it to do. And we will find out. Okay, we're about 45 seconds away, so I can do 45 seconds or so. All right, so we'll get going in just 45 seconds. Real quickly, uh, those of you that are still looking for the Kia Carnival, uh, we were supposed to have it this week. That's what they told us. It's Friday. It's not here. Uh, we've been told this before. So there is a delay there. I'm not sure why. Not sure what's going on. Uh, as soon as the carnival arrives, we're going to spend a good amount of time with it. We're going to go through. Nobody will have more in-depth detail on that vehicle than us um, because that's kind of what we do. We go really crazy in-depth here. All right. So let's see if we are close enough. I don't have my second counter here because it's my watch is tied to there. So we're just going to get going with the content. So here we go. Santa Cruz. You guys are on here. Uh, do me a favor real quick. I got to do some housekeeping thing. If you want to buy this vehicle, connect with me. Uh, if you're in Ontario, connect with me. I'll connect you up with the two dealers that support us. There's three dealers, actually. We're in Brantford Kia Studios right now. Uh, that's where we film. But our dealer group has Owen Sound Hyundai and Brantford Hyundai. If you're in Ontario, we want to be your dealer on this vehicle. Uh, connect with me. I will connect you to sales staff that can take care of you. Uh, if they don't know stuff, we'll all find out together. Um, but we can get this vehicle. We can get you on the waiting list uh, to see this vehicle, to buy this vehicle. That's what we'll do. So we've got to take care of that housekeeping, take care of the dealers that take care of me. And uh, now we'll get going. So in the comments, uh, also, do me a favor, hit that like button. I know these aren't the best videos, but uh, it really helps me if you guys hit that like button. Let's see if we go for maybe 40 likes today. Uh, we'll have a couple hundred people on during this video. Tell me what you think in the comments. Styling, rate it out of 10. We'll just tell you, if you guys, just give me a number out of 10 on the styling because I want to know what you think. And I'll tell you when I went home uh, yesterday, um, like I said, my wife is not a huge fan of it. Now, keep in mind, I drive a Kia Soul EV, so I drive an electric car. Uh, but what I mentioned a little bit less and I started to mention a little bit more now that I know there's a pickup truck coming is I also drive a pickup truck. I drive a Chevrolet Colorado pickup truck, and I do that because pickup trucks are super, super capable, um, and it fits my lifestyle. So um, this really appeals to me because I don't need a pickup truck. I just need some of the flexibility, and I'm going to tell you what I see this vehicle is, and I think it's going to echo what Hyundai is. This, they're saying it is not a truck. It is not an SUV. What it really is is an SUV that gives you a pickup truck bed. It is not meant to be a pickup truck. It's not meant to compete with the truck that I drive right now. Uh, will it steal sales from that? Yes. Will it steal sales from the Honda Ridgeline? Oh, absolutely. Uh, is it a direct competitor to the Honda Ridgeline? No, it's not. And I'll tell you about why I think it is and is not, uh, but why I think some people will do that. So styling, we got 9.5 out of 10 from some people. Um, only a couple people wrote in, so most people say they like it. Need more pictures is what people are saying. Okay, 
Does that make it a ute? Yeah. So the Australian crown, is it a ute? I don't know. Uh, you guys can tell me what you want to call it. I don't think it needs to be defined uh, by what it is. I think what, to me, needs to happen is it needs to be defined for what it is. So we're going to go through some of the – the way it works is uh, there's a press kit out, and I can download all of those pictures here. But I'm on the Car and Driver website only because they have 89 pictures here uh, well displayed in a full-size screen, whereas the media kit, I have to download them and use them. And uh, this just allows me to zip through some pictures a little quicker to show you. So we've got the side profile there. Uh, just a couple things I like. It's got a roof rack there so I can put my stuff up top, my kayak up top. I can put stuff in the back. We'll talk about all that uh, in a second here. So there we go. Front side, we've got the very Tucson looking front end. Now, this is based on the Tucson. They did mention it's a little wider than Tucson. I have the specs here for how wide it is. Um, let's just grab that for a second. Um, the width of the car is 75 inches exactly, which makes it narrower than the Tacoma Ridgeline and Frontier. They don't mention my pickup truck in there. Uh, but 75 inches, I believe that will be wider than the Tucson. And that's what they did say in the video. It's wider than the Tucson. But it is based on the Tucson platform, just a little bit wider. Some of these platforms are made to be, you know, just a strong, wider, longer, a little bit like that. Uh, they divide, design them from the ground up to build multiple vehicles. And that's what's based on. And you can see some Tucson-looking front-end design traits in there. It does seem to have a little bit less of that angular design through the side than the Tucson. So it's going to look like a Tucson, but it's also going to look a little bit like the Santa Fe there. Uh, we'll keep coming through the front. There's that Tucson looking front end. So when these lights are off, those are your daytime running lights there. Your high beams and low beams are right there. Uh, signal lights are right here in the side. When these lights are off, uh, it just looks like a grill. It's a very cool visual effect. Uh, if you didn't watch our Tucson video, we did a 2022 Tucson video, proper vehicle here, not a video like this. Uh, we did that uh, two, three days ago. So if you skip back a couple days from whatever, what's the date today? The 16th today. So probably on the 13th or so, we did the Tucson um, you can see the grill, the general look of it. Now, this is different than the Tucson grill in my eyes. A uh, little bit more aggressive, a little bit uh, spaced out look a little bit. But, um, of course, very similar theme, um, indistinguishable to most people. So we'll keep zipping through here. The back end of this vehicle, it's got a few different things. So there's going to be, in the States, four trim levels. I don't know how many Canada is going to have. Uh, we're talking about um, in, the, uh, in the United States, we're going to have an all-wheel drive model and a front-wheel drive model. The base model will probably be front-wheel drive. Uh, I believe you can add all-wheel drive to that. I would expect in Canada that all of ours will be all-wheel drive only. That just is what everybody does, um, and that's what I would expect here. Uh, you do have different lighting. This is LED lighting here. It sounds like that'll change a little bit potentially. Santa Cruz written right across the back there. Hyundai logo is going to be in the handle, and a Made in California is going to be up here on the uh, lighting somewhere. I forgot where on this picture, but we'll look at it in future pictures coming up. So we'll talk about that. We're just going to go through the looks first. We're going to go through some of the specs. Um, you can glean a lot from the pictures here if we look into things, and you'll see me do that as we go ahead. Uh, the Tucson we had here the other day, the um, Santa Fe that we had here the other day, they all had panoramic moonroofs. This has got a sunroof or a panoramic sunroof. This one does not have a panoramic sunroof, so sort of the traditional size one. Not sure why they did that. Maybe the roof line couldn't hold it. Maybe the uh, way they do things, um, maybe just the strength, maybe the roof rack is going to be a stronger roof rack. I don't know. Uh, the big thing that I'm hearing is that there's real potential for Hyundai to accessorize this vehicle with custom accessories. Uh, so we're going to see like roof cages up top and other stuff. And I'm going to show you the bed in a minute where there may be some opportunity for customization. There you go. There's the look at night with those uh, daytime running lights and headlights on. I keep moving through. Okay, let's talk about the seats. These ones have a perforation to them. They are will be heated and ventilated. If you saw or if you haven't seen our video of the Tucson, the 2022 Tucson, you're going to see a lot of similarities here. There are literally the same buttons in use, the same dash look in use. Um, these are the rear seats, and we'll go. And we'll get a better look at this in a minute. The rear seat is the only thing I have to question. The Tucson was, let's put it bluntly, the Tucson had an enormous uh, back seat with legroom. So you're going to lose about 4.8 inches of legroom. Now, that's not knee room. That's legroom overall uh, in this vehicle. So to create that four-foot bed and not make it like a three-and-a-half-foot bed or whatever that would have been without, uh, they do take some rear seat legroom away from the Tucson. And that's going to make you have, I think, a fairly comfortable backseat, but it will not be as roomy as that Tucson. Now, to be fair to the Tucson, uh, this, the luggage specs of the Tucson is actually more liters of cargo space or more cubic feet of cargo space than the Santa Fe. The rear seat is also a very large uh, rear seat. So if you're thinking the 2021 Tucson, um, then you're thinking the wrong car. The 2022 Tucson has a very huge backseat, and this one it will lose some backspace seat space compared to the 2022 Tucson. 
All right. Uh, there we go. Can this stream just start, please? Okay, so we started. Oh, right. Just going through some of the comments here. Oh, maybe I'm not on the bottom of the comments. Let me go back to that second. All right, underneath the seat, uh, sort of like a typical mid-size pickup. The seats fold up nicely. Uh, nice deep storage in here. That's super useful. If you've ever owned a truck, that's helpful to have. So just some general stuff you want to keep in the vehicle uh, all the time. I use my under floor storage in my pickup truck all the time, but I don't have a trunk in my pickup truck. So this is going to be useful uh, as extra storage. Uh, this is bolted in, and apparently you can take that out and have an almost flat floor. There is a hump in the middle. But you could take this out. Maybe you take a dog with you or something like that. You could just fold those seats up, take this plastic tray system out, and you could put uh, maybe a dog mat in the back or something like that. So something for uh, outdoorsy people who maybe take their dog around, maybe don't take people in the back as much. Sounds like you can still fold the seats down without this. Um, I'll have to double check that. But this is somewhat removable to put the seats up. It's not that hard to remove. So something to keep in mind there, which I think is kind of a cool system. There's a better view of it there. Uh, so again, some space around there, but you can put a uh, thing. What's cool to me is it looks like there's a space back here where you could put something long in, maybe a fishing rod or something like that. I don't know. Uh, maybe a paddle for a kayak. It looks like it doesn't have to be in the center. That seems to be, you know, it doesn't go all the way back. Now I could be misreading that from the pictures, but that's potential. Uh, typical cargo net back on the seat pocket there. So nothing really fancy there. Let's keep going through. Gauges. You're going to have traditional gauges. And you're going to have a 10 and a quarter inch screen. So we've seen that 10 and a quarter inch screen used extensively in the Kia Hyundai product line in the center of the dash. Uh, something like the 2021 Kia Sorento uh, uses a 12.3 inch screen in the gauge cluster. This is going to be a 10.25 inch screen. So a little bit smaller than the Sorento, um, but again, a little bit potentially smaller car than the Sorento. And um, so you will have this uh, gauges. These gauges will change with the drive modes. The look of them will change. Uh, but there's also going to be traditional gauges in that vehicle in the lower trim level. So everything, every picture we have is the top line version. And this is all pre-production. So some of this could change. But that's a 10 and a quarter inch screen uh, with some pretty cool graphics in there. You can see some neat stuff there. So there's your drive modes there. Uh, there are videos that I could show you later um, that have just sort of, like I said, you change the drive modes. Normal and sport look, or normal and smart look the same, but you can see the color change here uh, to the sport mode. Interestingly, they did not show a terrain mode. And of course, the Tucson we had had a terrain mode. Now I'm wondering if the Canadian spec vehicle will be different because in Canada, the Tucson has a drive train or a drive modes and terrain modes. Uh, so does the Santa Fe, so does the Kia Sorento, so does the Kia Telluride, so does the Palisade. I kind of wonder if we're going to get drive modes and terrain modes here in Canada, uh, where in the States they may not have that. I know on something like Telluride, it did not offer the terrain modes that we get here in Canada. Um, so that's a possibility for Canadians that maybe didn't uh, show up for Americans. Uh, no promises, no guarantees. I have no official information from Canada yet at all. But keep an eye out. We'll see if that happens when it comes. Uh, take a look at here, paddle shifters. There's an eight-speed dual clutch transmission or an eight-speed regular transmission. We'll talk about that in a second when we get to the engine pictures. Uh, little cargo lights. There are um, LED cargo lights in the bed that also will shine into the trunk in the bed, which we'll show you in a bit. There's a trunk in the bed. Uh, the floor lifts up, and uh, those are designed to shine right into the trunk uh, bed itself or the trunk as well. This is that 10 and a quarter inch screen that you see in the infotainment system. Again, those of you who hate the screens that pop up, look like an iPad stuck on the top of the dash. This looks like it's built into the dash. We saw that with the new Tucson. The interior of this, the front seat driving environment, um, it will be easily mistakable for a Tucson. It looks to me to be basically identical. Um, now, I've been told that this vehicle is a little wider, so whether it's wider in the cabin or just wider with the bodywork for the tires and that kind of thing, we will find out, but it does look identical. There's the new radio you see in all of our new Kia and Hyundai products, um, so that's sort of the radio display picture there. Keep moving through. Navigation, same idea. They show some nice sort of off-road-ish uh, type look at here. Mojave, California is where it's saying it on, is on the map, so factory navigation will be available. Uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay will be wireless on the 8-inch screen. They worded it very carefully. The 8-inch screen will come with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You will also be able to get a 10 and a quarter inch screen. That's how they're wording it. So right now what we're seeing is these 8-inch screens are coming from the factory with wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay. The 10 and a quarter inch screens currently today are not. Uh, in the Kia world, we know that some of those will receive a future software update. In the Hyundai world, I have not had that confirmed. So I can't say whether they will or they will not. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, there's your four-wheel drive lock button, basically showing you that it is an off-road capable vehicle. Down, down or hill descent control uh, right there. Um, wireless charge points um, for your cell phone, USB charging. So, will a mountain bike fit in the back? 
not quite. <laughs> I would say uh, this is their way of saying, yes, it will absolutely fit um, a mountain bike. Uh, it is going to hang out. And sometimes they have pictures of this with the wheel off. There's this little uh, accessory, whether that's sold by Hyundai itself or whether it's sold by aftermarket companies. Some of these things could be sold by Hyundai itself. Uh, this is a fairly common bike rack for some uh, smaller pickups. They hang it over. It holds onto the front wheel, keeps it from protecting, and the rear wheel goes in the bed. As you can see, it is on a diagonal. It is not straight. It's a four-foot bed. It is not going to be super useful to put bikes in the back if we're really blunt and honest with ourselves. What you're going to do is you're going to get the accessory hitch, which they do not show, um, and we're going to put that uh, in there, and you're going to have a hitch mount bike rack, or you're going to use the roof rack and put your bikes up there. You're going to put your gear in the back is what you're going to do with a four-foot bed. Now, potentially with the, with the um, uh, tailgate down, you're getting close to six feet of space uh, on the floor. There's going to be tailgate accessories in there, apparently. Uh, but if you get that six feet, you could probably put them in and put a nice little uh, rack. What I do with my pickup truck is just strap them down like a motorcycle um, into the bed of the truck. Um, so again, my bed is six feet. This one will be about six feet without the wall, give or take. So we'll talk about that in a second. A couple of things I want to point out in the back here. Chevrolet has steps right here. Um, no other truck maker does. Now, Chevrolet has a little handle to put your hands up here. Uh, but you can see this is a little lower. You can put your hand right on the edge of the bed if you wanted to. Uh, this is a little bit of a high step on some pickup trucks, and this, believe it or not, that's six inches or whatever lower, is easier to get up into. Only Chevrolet does this, and they have it here. I'm told that those um, can support up to 440 pounds of weight, so this is a real point where you can jump on the truck and get in there. What's nice is when the tailgate's down, you can still use that step to get in. And so sometimes the Ford pickup trucks have that piece that comes out of the tailgate, and the GM pickup trucks have the tailgate, the multi uh facet tailgate. These little corner steps are super useful to just climb into the bed because you'll have the tailgate hold here, step, step, and you'll be on the tailgate and in the back of the bed. So I was surprised to see these and they are very functional. They do carry weight. Like I said, they're, I've been told 440 pounds of weight. So they're certainly designed to hold that uh, weight. Moving on through. Okay, here's what we're talking about that's kind of interesting. Tailgate down, that's typical stuff. You can kind of see a trunk in there. We'll look at that in future pictures. This is a hard cargo cover. There is a strap there. So when you, uh, you, they have it clipped to the cargo uh, area at the back here, but you can pull that strap and launch that um, recliner blind or that sort of uh, blind style cover right there. That is supposed to be a Hyundai accessory. I believe it's not standard on any trim. We'll find out if they include it standard on the trim, but it sounds like you can add that anytime. Uh, it's got a Hyundai logo. It's, it looks like it's lockable. Hopefully it's lockable with the key. I don't know, um, but it is a hard cover. Uh, rumor is at this point you can put 220 pounds of weight, so you could even stand on that. It's a very firm, hard cover, uh, so that's kind of good to see. And then this bed in the truck we're going to talk about as well. So let's talk about that. Box needs a box needs a bed extender. Yep. So some of your questions here, guys. I will get to them in a second. I know we're going uh, quite long already. We'll just keep going through. There's a strap, so there is uh, cargo tie downs inside the bed. We're going to look at the inside here for a second. Uh, okay, there's more junk in the trunk or junk in the bed. So here's the reason I think this makes a ton of sense. I am a kayaker. I'm an outdoor person. I'm going to throw my kayak on the roof. And if I have a crossover or an SUV, I always have wet stuff. I don't want to throw it into the passenger compartment, which is what you do in a wagon style SUV. I can throw it in here. Uh, we went to the beach on Saturday, my family and I. We did some kayaking, did some other stuff. We threw our lawn chairs and we had a blanket down on the ground. All those things collect sand. You can just throw that in here. And you don't have to worry about it. You hose it out later. When you're camping, you take your firewood that's been sitting with all the other firewood in this, you know, building that has bugs and everything else in there. Uh, you throw it in here. You're not throwing it in the interior of your vehicle. So a pickup bed is super helpful if you're an outdoorsy kind of adventurous person like myself. Uh, so you guys can see sort of the in your own minds the practicalities of this. But you still have an SUV inside. And to me, that really appeals. Fuel efficiency, which we're going to talk about what we know and what we don't know. And go from there. So again, the people, you know, who does it sell to? We're going to market this to the gardeners. And the time you go to the home hardware store and do that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's great for that. Um, for me, I'm looking at for outdoor activities that I can just throw stuff in, keep it out of the way. And uh, but that's how you're going to see this marketed. It's outdoors, outdoor, outdoors people, active people, people doing home improvement type stuff. Um, there's some tools and other stuff in there. Your dirty boots. Uh, the rumor is this is going to be a little shorter than some of the pickup trucks. Now my Chevrolet Colorado has a little bit taller. Uh, bed than something like the Jeep Gladiator. Uh, will the Gladiator be a similar height bed? Uh, maybe. Obviously, this doesn't compete with the Gladiator, but there's there's a variety of sizes. So I've heard this will be a little bit less tall than some pickup trucks, which I expect to be a little less tall than my Colorado, 
but the gladiator for instance is a is a larger truck that is in that um pickup bed that has a little bit smaller uh height to the bed okay let's flip around somebody said that strap looked a little flimsy and awkward yeah i don't know uh we'll sort of see how that works out in real life again wet stuff you don't want to throw it inside so they're just doing the marketing bit here here's a trunk controversial and good thing so here's the thing if i go grocery shopping in my pickup truck with my kids kids are in the back seat that's where they're supposed to be i'm sticking my groceries with my kids it's not fun uh, even if i don't get that retractable little cover i do have an interior storage space which is both lockable waterproof and wind proof like you're not going to have your groceries get wet so you do have a trunk this has a drain plug in there you can fill it with ice and use it as a cooler which is pretty cool because then you don't have to take a cooler necessarily although i don't think it has insulating properties of you know, a high-end cooler, uh, but you can put ice in there, drinks in there, other kind of stuff, and drain it all out. But you can put gear in there, and you can lock it. You can see it's got a big weather strip around it. It's sealed, or weather strips up there, actually. It's sealed. It's good. Now, what Honda does is Honda folds the tailgate down, or they open the tailgate like this. So there will be a reach over the tailgate, because it's just the tailgate just drops down, uh, and you will put stuff in here. One more thing about the bed is that it's a tiered system. So you can put, um, like, a uh, four-by-eight sheet of plywood above the wheel wells, and this um, um, tailgate will come up a little bit to also support that out uh those sheets of plywood or drywall or whatever else you have in there so really functional bed but it's four feet long it's not designed to replace your pickup truck it's designed to give you your crossover with a pickup truck bed so uh keep going through here a couple more things i don't know if i'm teaching you guys anything that you didn't know maybe you guys already knew this stuff um okay so let's go back on this turbo engine okay let's talk about the two engines 2.5 liter uh, engine. There's a 2.5 liter non-turbocharged engine. We're using this in the Kia world. It just came out in the Sorento, uh, the Tucson. It's also in the Tucson. Uh, Hyundai uses it as well. So the 2.5 liter non-turbo, something like the Kia um, Sorento with a 2.5 liter, it tows 2,000 pounds, has an eight-speed traditional automatic transmission. So eight-speed transmission, tows 2,000 pounds on the something like the uh, Sorento. On this car, the same engine and transmission is going to tow 3,500 pounds. That's what the turbo engine tows on the Sorento. So that's traditional, um, that's the smaller of the two, well, not smaller, the same size engine, but that's the non-turbo engine. About 180 horsepower is what they're saying. I'll, make, I'll get you the exact specs of what they say. 190 plus horsepower and 180 foot-pounds of torque. So plenty for what this vehicle is, given that you're not carrying a ton of stuff and tows up to 3,500 pounds. Now, there's a 2.5 liter direct injection um, turbocharged engine, which in the Kia world, we call the Sorento engine. Also it's used in the Hyundai world. Um, and again, I'm gonna go back to the Kia because we just introduced the Sorento. The Sorento used to have a V6 that towed 5,000 pounds. The new turbo engine has more power, more torque, but it only towed 3,500 pounds in the Sorento. So I was thinking, because I figured this car would come with this engine, this truck car, whatever it is, uh, I was thinking it would only tow 3,500 pounds with this engine. It tows 5,000 pounds with this engine, which puts it right in direct com competition with the Ridgeline. So the Honda Ridgeline tows 5,000 pounds. This tows 5,000 pounds. Now, are you going to want to tow 5,000 pounds everywhere with this? Probably not. But I have a 3,600-pound trailer, which could easily be towed by this, cannot be towed by something that tows 3,500 pounds. So that turbo engine is interesting. The other thing with this dual-clutch transmission on this uh, vehicle uh, the turbo engine with the dual clutch on something like the Sorento gets better highway mileage than the non-turbo engine. So we don't have mileage numbers released for this vehicle yet, but it is possible that this turbo engine on the highway will have better fuel efficiency than the 2.5 liter non-turbo. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, so let's keep going through here. So like I said, I did not expect it to tow 5,000 pounds. Um, you know, and let's talk about payload capacity. The vehicle can carry 1,700 pounds. 600 of that could be in the bed. So that's going to limit, you know, a 5,000-pound trailer is going to have roughly a 500-pound tongue weight at just 10%. Uh, many trailers have 10 to 15% if they're camping trailers. Uh, so you are putting a lot of weight on the back. You're going to have to properly load the trailer, properly equip the trailer. You need to put trailer brakes on the trailer uh, and have a system in there. It hasn't got a built-in trailer brake controller in this car. So when you get in that 5,000-pound range, you're going to have to really pay attention to what you're doing because although it can tow it, a 5,000-pound boat might have a little less tongue weight than a 5,000-pound camping trailer. Those are things to keep in mind. But that 3,500-pound, 3, 3,600, 3,700-pound 3, trailer, you're well within range if you set it up correctly. 
Um, and like I said, I have not seen pictures of this with a hitch or with wiring on it, which every other pickup truck seems to come with. Uh, so we'll see how that comes out. It should be probably just underneath the bumper there. Um, but towing capability is there, which means that some people like myself could replace their actual pickup truck with this. And uh, that surprised me. So that's kind of a cool thing. All right, we're going to zip through here quickly. I want to show you a couple more interior type things. We've seen the front. Uh, we'll go through. We will take your questions in a second. What time is it? Have we got overtime? Not quite yet. Some interesting little details. They have a little icon throughout uh, on various areas, which I think is kind of cool. They call them Easter eggs in the Jeep world. This is that retractable cover. It's got a Hyundai branded cover uh, or handle there. So, um, you know, nice looking uh, little cover there. Um, there's the back. Santa Cruz, like I said, somewhere in here it says designed in California. I believe it's up on the side. I don't remember where. I saw it on a video, but they zoomed in so much I didn't uh, pay attention. I should have. So, again, here's where we have normally some wiring for regular trucks here for um for like proper trucks this is again not a truck according to hyundai um so no hitch wiring that i see here there is a plug there maybe that's got some stuff but there's no hitch on here so we haven't seen that yet and some like me who's looking at a truck for a truck type purpose of towing um that's something i'd like to see still and we will see that the handle there the camera in the side the handle the hyundai logo there's your lights i believe we'll see the design in california soon nope there's the steps and everything we saw um okay that's the clay model we don't need to see all this stuff okay let's go back to other pictures uh let me just drag some other pictures across here for you guys let me get over here all right let's talk about specs for a second and we will go back um you know what i'll bring it back to a picture you can can look at and enjoy i was going to put some videos up for you but we'll uh, flip to that in a minute all right so specs real quickly the bed is 48.4 inches in the upper and uh, 52.1 in the lower. And that's basically, sounds like the cab's going to have a little bit of an intrusion there. Uh, rear window, I've been told there is some sort of manual opening rear window on some trims. We'll see if that comes to Canada in our models. Uh, Bose Audio, 18 or 20-inch wheels. So everything we've seen here is 20-inch wheels. Uh, if I can go back to, where's my cursor? There we go. If I can go back to something from the side here, we'll take another picture back to the vehicle. Bear with me, guys, for two seconds. We'll just skip through here. Trying to get back to the, where we were at the beginning. Uh, so the 18 and 20 inch wheels. So what I like about that is a couple things. Um, come on. There we go. We're almost there. The 20 inch wheels are going to look better for most city people. Um, what you like about seeing um, 18 inch wheels is um, you'll have a little bit more sidewall. So if you are going to go off road, uh, there's no off road versions of this car planned, but they're not ruling them out as a future sort of option package trim. Uh, you may want to go with the smaller off or smaller wheels and maybe a lower trim level and have a little more sidewall if you're going super far off road. So those are available at 18 to 20 inch. Uh, we'll talk about all the safety stuff if you want. Digital key. Let's read this. Digital key allows owners to leave traditional keys at home and allows secure sharing of keys to family and friends. Digital key is currently compatible only with phones using the Android operating system. As you read on, um, the Blue Link system, which is uh, the system that allows you to remote start the car from your cell phone, uh, unlock doors, keep things locked, make sure everything's all good the way you want it. That system, the My Hyundai with Blue Link smartphone app, will be working with the Amazon um, uh, Blue Link app and the Google Assistant Blue Link, Blue Link Google Assistant app. Uh, so, sounds like potential is there for to say Google start my vehicle and it'll warm it up for you, which is kind of a cool system. Uh, some features can be controlled via Android Wear and Apple Watch smartwatch. So here's the thing, an Android vehicle, you can put it uh, on some trim levels, you'll be able to put your, uh, your cell phone to the door handle, the door handle will unlock, you'll be able to get in the car, hit the start button and it will start. I think that'll come to iPhone, I honestly do. Uh, I think Apple will make an announcement about that kind of thing, they'll announce partnerships and off they'll go from there. So that's kind of a cool system and if it has the ability to work with a smartwatch, that's kind of cool as well. So that is coming. Eight speaker Bose audio system, which is down a few speakers, partly because there's probably no trunk to put some subwoofers in there. Uh, what else we got? I think that's about it. Other than stuff, if you guys ask me, I will go there. All right, let's go back to your questions here. And I'm sure there's stuff I missed. We're probably close to that half hour mark right now. So if I can get my cursor back off the right screen, there we go. I will take your questions. Uh, all right, on 2019 Sorrento, is the tow harness just under the car? My Sorrento doesn't have the tow package. Uh, let's talk about that totally separate. Let's talk about this car for a minute. If this was classified as a pickup truck, it would be only a compact pickup truck. Yes, it is a small pickup truck. Um, Ford is coming out with a Maverick, which is based on the Bronco platform. It will be a competitor to this. The Ridgeline is probably a competitor in most people's minds, 
but it has a foot longer bed and it really competes more with the truck uh, category. This is going to be uh, a little bit smaller than that. Um, and like, like I said, for a family of four like mine, it sounds like it'd be pretty good. Um, what I'm really liking is the handling of this car. If you've ever driven a pickup truck on a regular basis, it drives nothing like a modern crossover. Uh, so we've seen these before in the 70s and 80s with small cars that have not a whole lot of payload capability being popular. But of course, everybody moved away from cars and moved different things. Now we've seen this. The Subaru Baja was out like 20 years ago with this kind of design. Uh, I think this is a cleaned up version. I think it's practical. I think the bed in the bottom is a good idea. Um, but it's going to compete more with people who want a crossover and the flexibility of an open bed instead of a wagon style. Not so much with people who want a pickup truck, except for someone like me. You know, I have no need for a pickup truck other than towing. Uh, this is capable of towing my trailer, so that's interesting. All right. Uh, Legroom we talked about a little bit. Du, 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 du. Just a two saw with the rear roof cut off. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is, right? Like, it's not going to appeal to everybody, and it, they, they know that. They're not asking you to buy it. They're not asking pickup truck buyers to like it. Uh, outdoor adventure people, people who get their stuff dirty and just want to throw it in their vehicle, this is going to appeal to. For me, I can mount my kayak up top there, tie it down to the front, tie it down to the back, and send it on the vehicle. I can throw my wet junk in the back. I can put my bikes in the bike rack on the back, all my camping gear. doesn't matter if it's dirty or dusty. When you're done camping, clean up the tent. Stuff's there, and you can keep going. So that's pretty cool to me. Um, but yeah, it's not going to appeal to everyone. When is it expected for release in Canada? Summer. Summer 2021 is what I'm being told. It's the same release date, uh, same season date for Canada and the United States is what I'm being told. Uh, we will find out more. You can sign up on the Hyundai USA site, the Hyundai Canada site if you're in North America. Uh, you can sign up for more details and they'll give them to you as they become available. Uh, in Canada, I can tell you this is one of the top places to follow. We will give you every bit of Canadian information. And of course, a lot of that will apply to the American market as well. So just subscribe to our channel. We'll have a lot more video on this vehicle when it comes out. Okay. Da, 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 da. Where are we here? Please put the, what can you put in the back of, what can you put in the back of the Santa Cruz that you wouldn't put in the back of a Tucson? Wet and smelly stuff. So somebody here is very much against this idea and I'm not asking you to like this idea. I'm saying for someone like myself, like we said, we talked about you go camping, you take your wet gear, your gross gear, you don't, it doesn't stink up the car. You go get that firewood that just been sitting there bug infested with all the other firewood. You throw it in a, a bag of the firewood in the car in the back. You're not bringing those bugs in. Uh, you go mountain biking, put your muddy gear out in the back and it stays dry or it allows it to stay there without stinking up the interior. You hose it down when you're done. A pickup bed, if you've never had a pickup truck, a pickup bed is super helpful. Um, pickup trucks are designed for towing and are overbuilt. They have four-wheel drive low for off-roading that nobody ever does with them. Uh, what this does is allows people like myself, who are outdoorsy people, to put dirty stuff, big stuff, awkward stuff in the back, and you don't have to bring it inside your vehicle. So, yeah. Da -da -da -da. I preferred watching my reviews when it was just Kia stuff. Well, that's great. <laughs> we still do Kia stuff. This month, we're doing a lot of Hyundai stuff. We're going to mix a lot of Kia stuff in as well. Um, can't promise I'll only do Kia. I've been asked and uh, paid to do extra stuff, and I love this. So, all right. Do you think the ride height will be the same as the Tucson? It will be a little bit lifted from that. I think it'll be a little bit lifted. There was a ground clearance figure in here, eight point something inches, uh, was what I was told. I think it will be a little bit lifted. When you look at the back, the approach or the departure angle there looks a little bit better. Approach angle, I'm not so sure. It looks similar, uh, but to me, it still looks like it's a little better. Um, is it designed for hardcore off-roading? No, it's not. Is it designed for off-roading that 95% of people are going to do, which means a dirt road, fire road, uh, sort of an unmaintained, um, you know, ATV trail that's still not a road, but still capable of going down? You're going to be able to get down that in this car, uh, especially if it has those terrain modes, it's going to help out. So my kid always complained about how much, how much the car smells from fishing. Yeah, exactly. So there's another thing. You do some fishing, you throw some stuff in the back, uh, Technically, you could put like a little live well in the back, I suppose. <laughs> it holds water. I mean, it's got a drain plug in there. So there we go. All right, guys. We are basically through that half an hour. That's usually what we spend with this. Um, as you can tell, I'm excited about this car. I'm not saying everyone should like it. My own wife doesn't like it. I probably can't buy this car even if I wanted to. Um, but I'm not done asking for it. I want to talk inside, though. When you look at the inside, we didn't really look at that. Look at the new uh, Sorento. I could probably find some pictures here if I just... Uh, Maybe pull this out here. Um, uh, let's see if I can shrink it down here. Come on, it doesn't like me right now. Yeah, so the inside, 
uh, look at the new Tucson, and you're going to have most of the uh, pictures there uh, from the Tucson. Let me just see if I can go. Oh, hold on. If I come back to this screen, I can show you inside pictures just for a quick second. Uh, view photos. We'll see if I can do this quickly for you guys, and we'll just show you one or two pictures of the inside. It is very much Tucson on the inside, and I am having internet issues here. It's not loading very quickly. Oh, hold on. View the gallery. Okay, let's see if I can find it for you. Okay, yeah, you know what, guys? Best thing to do is just look at the pictures yourself, uh, because by the time I find it and have it up there, uh, you guys will probably find it online quicker than I can get it for you. So there's what we know about it. Uh, if you want to know more, like I said, Current Drivers website is great. to have all the media photos on there. It's probably the best place to uh, find it right now. Uh, do me a favor. If you want to know more, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button because as we have information, I'm going to continue to make videos. Probably a lot shorter than this, but when it comes in, uh, I'm going to go around this thing completely. Um, I'm going to do some driving in it. I'm going to hope to take it home and convince my wife on it, and we will go from there. So she's not watching, so I can say all this stuff online, and we can all find it later. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I will leave it at that, and uh, we will tune in uh, with you guys again on Monday. We're still waiting for that Kia Carnival to show up. So Monday, we're going to continue to do Kia and Hyundai vehicles, one or the other. If you have a request, let me know. When the Carnival shows up, we're going to spend a few days with that, going through that. And uh, we'll continue mixing things in. That's what we do here. We go really in-depth to the Kia Hyundai channel. So I want to thank everyone for watching. i got to walk over to the computer or to the phone over there to stop it. So again, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll talk to you soon.